Gagwa himself could not have become president um, unless the military had moved in the way they did and, and, and done did the coup. Um, so Munangagwa owes his presidency to to the military, and and so the military has a has an important stake. The name they give themselves is that they are stockholders of of the nation. In other words, they've always seen themselves as as a group uh, that is an important power broker within the nation, and that's why they they carried out the coup. So my perception is that there is a power sharing arrangement between. Munangagwa and Chiwenga. Um, I don't always buy the view that there is deep animosity between them. I think that they they work together as and when they have to achieve their common goal. The common purpose in ZANU PF is always to retain power, is always to win elections. It doesn't matter how. Right now, they are talking about the 2023 election. They're not concerned about the economy because they themselves are living fairly comfortable lives. So as long as they can retain power, uh, they do close ranks on that. And they've always done that even during the Mugabe period. They may have had their misgivings towards Mugabe, but when it came to retaining power, they all came together. And that's what we will continue uh, to see. So my view is that even though there may be some fissures, some uncomfortability between the two camps or more camps, when it comes to ZANU-PF facing an existential threat when they're losing power, they will eventually come together. But I have to point out something that I have observed over the past two years. Manangagwa security, uh, close security, has become visibly dramatic. Um, and 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 expanded. Um, you know, it's almost like you're watching a, a movie or a North Korea, um, uh, you know, security system. You see these uh, men in, in in dark glasses hanging on the doors of uh, Mercedes Benz as Munangako arrives at a at a venue. It, it's all very dramatic and 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 rather uh, uh, silly. But it it, it suggests to me that Munangagwa is very scared of something. I don't think that he is scared of any threat from the opposition. Uh, I don't think so. I, I think he knows the opposition does not have the physical capacity to harm him. But but he is very scared of something. And then the question is, who is he scared of? And, and I think that is more internal uh, than external. There were those bomb blasts, weren't there, um, during the election campaign um, ahead of the national elections in August 2018 um, that were never really explained. As far as I remember, mm-hmm. no one has actually been held to account for that at all. That was at no. Gagwa's rallies. Of course, he escaped absolutely unscathed, but some other people were hurt. Absolutely. Um, I mean, the, the fear, Patrick, is that uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's an intelligence man, first and foremost, and... Uh, Deception is part of the game that he, he is very adept at. Now you wonder why, after having had such a serious threat on his life, would there be not even a single arrest uh, of, of uh, an offender? You would have expected some, you know, something big to have come out of it, but but nothing. It's it's just gone quiet. So you wonder whether it was a, a real threat or it was something that was done in order to create. Uh, this impression of a leader who is uh, uh, who is threatened, a leader who must be protected, and, and I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me the way that the matter has been handled. It it does appear that um, ownership of Zimbabwe, if, if that's a term we can use, has not really changed for you know for a few decades. The the same characters who are running the the JOC. Um, the Joint Operations Committee command, mm-hmm. command, yeah, the, the, mm-hmm. you know, with you know, command with with um, you know, people like Parents Shiri, um, people like General Constantino Chiwenga, who is supposedly the number two today. Um, you know, they, it's the same. It's the same characters. Um, what what um, what sets them apart from you know the fuel baron? Kuda Tagwirai, for example, are, are they 
are they all operating in 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 the same you know as fingers in the same glove as it were or is there anything which stands between them well i i i don't think that um there is much that is um there's much divergence between them as far as i see it could that agree uh, and and the cabal sort of the cartel that 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 runs in a number of important uh, sectors in zimbabwe including energy um they, they are important to the regime because they supply uh, certain goods and services which uh, the political elites need uh, but at the same time they also benefit from their proximity to to the state they benefit from getting very cheap uh, foreign currency on the basis that they are importing essential commodities um we have seen how they have played a role in command agriculture which i think the minister of finance professor mturin nuwe does not like it or in fact i don't think he i know that he does not like it at all but he doesn't have the power to we should probably tell our listeners that um the public accounts committee yes the public accounts committee wanted to interview a um kudata grey but um initially he uh, he made himself unavailable because apparently he was traveling and then uh, later on um zanu pf mp's walked out on a, a committee hearing on the basis that they were uh, they, they they were protesting against uh, the mdc vice president tendai biti who is the chairperson of the public accounts committee but what other people also don't notice is that uh, the person who was uh, uh arranging and organizing this workout who is called Tino Machakaire he is an MP recently made a deputy minister by Mnangagwa he is a very close ally of Kudata Grey so Kudata Grey has a lot of people a lot of hands in various uh, parts of not just the economy but also the political establishment he's not he's not someone like a character for example like a Nigeria um billionaire Aliko Dangote is well known to fund both the opposition and also the ruling party uh does tagwara have similar you know um <laughs> quid pro quos uh, across the political spectrum or or is he very much um you know identifiable with the this regime yeah i i'm not very sure in regards to the opposition i don't think so i've not heard anything but what i what we do know is that before this regime kudata gure was very close to the first lady the then first lady grace mugabe and 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 her family so he literally was able to seamlessly move from the g40 faction which was being led by grace mugabe to becoming a close ally of the munangagwa chiwenga group uh you know we see him being very dominant in in that state he would have thrived even if g40 had had succeeded in the in the succession battle it, it does seem that um zimbabwe has got to the state where it it you know it, it's not like um uh the united states at the end of the 1800s when a strong political leader was able to to break the the grip of the monopolies um the sort of the the trajectory of uh, of zimbabwe is, is closer to i don't know somewhere like mexico for example where where even today monopolies both within government and the private sector you know have really hobbled the country yeah sure um can i can i also just point out nick and, and patrick and and perhaps you you might have um head of this but information that i i get from people uh within the business community and then even outside the business community is that very often ignored is the power of what i would call uh the white oligarchy hmm? <laughs> the very powerful white uh business people in zimbabwe who have always been uh close to zanu pf close enough to zanu pf to support it financially we know one uh, very powerful group which has uh, funded zanu pf's election campaigns in the past um but but these are not very small people they might even be wealthier 
and even more powerful than Kudata Gray. But unfortunately, Tagure is the face that most people focus on. But I think that a little bit more digging may reveal that there are some very powerful uh, groups that are benefiting. You will notice that when the central bank uh, froze the accounts, it froze the accounts of Tagure's companies, Sakunda and, and so forth, but it also froze companies of, uh, there's one called Landela, which is owned by a, a certain Kranswick, who is quite a wealthy, very powerful, white, white businessman. Now, I think people need to also consider the role of this uh, group, which is very much in the background, probably funds uh, ZANU-PF and Mnangagwa uh, for the benefits they also get and the protections they get. Uh, it would be interesting to sort of have an understanding of that uh, cabal and how it, it, it benefits People already know about the Rotenbergs and and so forth. In 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 the you know they've always been close to to Mnangagwa for a long time, but I suspect that there is more that also continue to operate in the background. That's a very interesting point. I mean, I I, I wonder, you know, how how many uh, interested parties there are sitting in the in the UK House of Lords. No, absolutely. Um, I think that we had. Uh, we had some an, an interesting phenomenon last year. I think with the uh, one of is it the Moti group? Uh, they they have now apparently left Zimbabwe. I think there probably was a, a disagreement with the Mnangagwa regime. But um, I remember um, having a conversation with uh, Lord De Hain, Peter Hain, who was an advisor to the Moti group, and I was asking him after the violence that had taken place in Zimbabwe um, recently. And uh, he said that he had since left the, the Moti group. He was no longer a special advisor to them. And, um, you know, it, it was interesting that um, he had done so and that perhaps also the Moti group seems to have divested. I don't know if it's true that they've divested, but what it also tells you is that uh, after the coup, there was a lot of uh, uh, interest by members of, uh, the different establishments around the world who perhaps were also seeing opportunities in Zimbabwe. But unfortunately, most of these people were mistaken. They thought that Munangaka was a pragmatic uh, person who understood business. At least that's how he was sold uh, to them. And and uh, unfortunately, they were solely mistaken. Do you think there's anything, Alex, that um, outside powers could do yeah, to to help matters in Zimbabwe right now, I mean, you know, one block of powers would be the West, Europe, North America, whatever, and the other would be the region, particularly Southern African development community, um, because what's one of the things that seems to be happening at the moment is there's pretty much a vacuum. Uh, there are these sort of ritual condemnations. You saw it after the police attacks on the uh, MDC headquarters in Harare on Wednesday, uh, ritual condemnation from the Department of State in um, in the US. Uh, but um, all the time, you, you get this criticism coming from the ZANU-PF government in um, Zimbabwe that, you know, it's the Western sanctions that are holding the, the country back and so on. Um, that there doesn't seem to be any really coherent policy. I see, uh, the, uh, I think earlier this week, there was talk of a European Union re-engagement with the Manangagwa government. I mean, is any of this stuff leading anywhere? Or essentially the West wants to stay out of it because anything they do will be uh, seen as an infringement on sovereignty. And... Um, the region, uh, South Africa's just got too many of its own internal issues to deal with right now, and uh, the rest, the rest of the region, it doesn't really have the bandwidth or muscle to do much without South Africa. Yeah, um, you know, the, the 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 statement that many Zimbabweans you hear them say is that the only people who can solve. Uh, their challenges are the Zimbabwean themselves. But unfortunately, there's just too much um, animosity between the big political players for them to find each other. And um, so 
the, the, the real role that could be played by the external actors is to... Not